open door. Ours is the party of liberty, the party of equality, of opportunity for all, and favoritism for none. It is the intent and purpose of these rules to encourage and allow the broadest possible participation of all voters in Republican Party activities at all levels and to assure that the Republican Party is open and accessible to all Americans. As you read in section 34-507 of the Idaho Election Code, the delegates to the state convention of each political party shall be selected in the manner prescribed by the rules and regulations promulgated and adopted by the state central committee. And in Article 2, Section 2 of the Idaho Republican Party rules states, each county shall follow the same procedure as a legislative district in holding an open meeting for the selection of delegates to the Republican State Convention. The incumbent Benoit County Chairman issued a notice by email one day before the Benoit County Reorganization Meeting stating that A. Nominations of non-members will not be accepted for consideration. B. Only current paid Benoit County Republican Party membership and immediate family members of the newly elected precinct committeemen would be able to attend the meeting. And C, membership dues will not be accepted at this reorganization meeting. Those wishing to join the Republican Party of Benoit County can do so at the next regular meeting in July. Article 2, Section 3 of the Idaho Republican Party rules states, any person qualified to vote in the county may be elected a delegate or alternate to the GOP state convention. Several members who wanted to attend didn't because of the chairman's meeting notice. Joseph Clark, a registered Benoit County Republican voter, entered the meeting on May 24, 2012 with the intention of becoming a dues-paid member and seeking to be nominated as a delegate to the state convention. But he was removed from the premises by a newly elected precinct committeeman because, it, because he wasn't a current paid dues member. Therefore, we pose the question, is the Idaho State Republican Party going to ignore the willful violation of state party rules? And further, is the Idaho State Republican Party really going to ignore the unjust exclusion of qualified Republican voters from seeking office to become state convention delegates or county central committee officers? We are convinced by the above cited Republican Party rules and the governing election laws of the state of Idaho that the violation of Article 2, Sections 2 and 3 of the Idaho State Republican Party rules deprived us of our rights under the law. The result of this willful discriminatory practice has invalidated the Benoit County delegates selected at the May 24, 2012 meeting. If we're going to have rules, there must be consequences for breaking those rules. Otherwise, there's no point in having rules. Failure to act today will condone future rule violations. I ask you to choose the right. Therefore, on behalf of the aggrieved registered Republican voters of Benoit County, I make a motion that the Idaho State Delegation vote to disqualify all four Benoit County delegates and all four alternates. Thank you. So by the rules of the convention, the process is set forth we would need a motion to suspend the rules, to depart from the rules. The rules provide that after the motion, there's five minutes of stated objection, five minutes for a response by the county. The convention shall then vote on the issue. That's the rule of the convention adopted by the convention. It would need a motion to suspend the rules of two-thirds to change that. So with that, we proceed to the county five-minute response. The Chair of Benoit County, please identify yourself and find it. Uh, I'm Pam Secor Kaner. I am the chairman of the Republican Party in Benoit County. Um, first of all, uh, in regards to the open meetings, uh, our understanding when the Idaho Supreme Court ruled for the closed primaries that we were uh, a private organization as such could conduct our business, and we had many conversations with. Uh, the state party headquarters. In fact, I'm going to read an email that we received and we were going by uh, from Jonathan Parker, and I know Jonathan does not 
make these decisions by himself. He usually gets um, uh, guidance from Norm and Jason. And it says, uh, state, county, and legislative district central committees are not required by state party rules or Idaho code to hold open meetings. We are private clubs and not bound by uh, open meeting laws such as government agency. I hope this helps. Also, um, Jonathan, I don't know that you know this, but you accidentally left a, an email, a voicemail on my, my home answering machine that was actually meant for Tiffany Clark, but I got it on mine, it's still there. And it tells Tiffany that even though Norm did not like the fact that we, have, we could do an open meeting, that it was legal. So we were going on the best information that we had at the time. Our decision to close the meeting was not done so lightly. There are several factors leading to that decision. Uh, on April 5th, our membership rolls exploded to 43 persons, and the fire room capacity, uh, the fire code capacity for that room was 50. At our reorganization, we actually had 47 people. Also, um, we've been dealing with a pretty radical um, group in our, in our central committee, and that beginning with the February 2nd meeting, there's been a lot of disruption to the point that I've actually had to have um, armed uh, city or sheriff deputies present to, to stop the, the, the threat of violence. On February 2nd, I had one of the members of this group actually threaten me with physical violence and to start throwing tables. Um, and so, uh, one of, this, one of the, the backgrounds of this is that they've actually um, got mad at me because I had the audacity to have a different opinion about who a presidential candidate uh, should be. Uh, I believe that's an American right. Also, uh, at our March caucus, this really uh, ratcheted up because we had the audacity to go out and inform the voters, and we had other than Ron Paul voters there. And actually, Ron Paul did not win our caucus. We did not allow it to be manipulated, even though the attempt was made to disrupt as much as possible. Um, in regard to only accepting nominations for members who were paid dues, that was a bylaw that was actually put into place by a committee in 2010 that was made up of three of the people that are petitioning you today. One is Tiffany Clark, the other one's Del Rust, the other one's Charles Steinbach, and then. Um, Carol Rust also, and John Ferris. This was a bylaw that we were obligated to do because it was adopted before I even became chairman. And, um, and, and it, accepting the dues at the reorganization meeting, the reorganization meeting was there to do that, reorganize, not conduct normal business. And I would like to read um, from the person who was actually running that meeting, which was not me, which was the nomination chair, Carol Carwin. And she made a statement here, and she says, all officers had names submitted by all and any members and any non-members prior to the organization meeting. And during the meeting, nominations to, were open to the floor, as well by me, Carol Harwood. As we proceeded to delegate nominations, I opened the floor for nominations and stated that anyone could be nominated as a delegate, even though they were not paid members to the Benoit County Republican Party. If anyone being elected as a delegate, was a non-member, they only had to be a registered Republican in the county to which would be verified at the Coward House. All elections were done properly and fair. I personally had contact with Jonathan Parker about our meetings and those complaints by outside entities towards our bylaws. The state chairman and Jonathan Parker, as well as the region chair, assured me that our county Republican bylaws gave us authority to conduct our meetings accordingly. This point of contention was due to closing our meeting, which we have every right to do as a private party. We did not come under the closed meeting rule. However, the problem came about from the agenda which allowed spouses to attend who are not members. Um, she also goes on to state that uh, Tiffany or her husband Joe Clark, who was a non-member, who by the way had four years as Tiffany was a precinct committeeman to become involved and a dues-paying member of the Republican Party and never graced the doors. Except for maybe once I've heard. The delegate's time is up. It's five minutes. Okay, so we've heard an objection for Benoit County and the response from Benoit County. Are there objections for any of the other uh, three parts of the uh, report, the Mr. other three Chairman, counties? Could I have one minute for a rebuttal? Uh, by rule, you're not allowed to. I would, I would need I, a unanimous consent request or. Mr. Chairman, or point of information, 
Yes. It's my understanding if you read the, the party rules on this challenging of the credential report, I don't have it in front of me, but maybe they can look it up. I believe that I have the five minutes, and then the chairman of the credentials committee has five minutes to speak on behalf of the report. Is that correct? He will speak at the end. He's the maker of the motion. He'll, does, he'll have five minutes at the end. It did not say in there that, that the Bedouin County chairman would have five minutes. Am I wrong? Yeah, it's a de deferral. We're going to do that for each of the four counties, the deferral to the county chair, and then we'll have a wrap up by the maker of the motion. So, is there, a, if, unless there's a unanimous consent request for more time, maybe you've done what you wanted through the information request? I just needed basically 35, 40 seconds. Is that unanimous? No. All right, I'm seeing no unanimous consent request, and I don't see any unanimous consent. So, are there objections to the other, any of the other three parts of the motion, the report from the committee? Commit. Any of the other three counts? Okay, seeing none, um, we'll allow the maker of the motion to uh, close the discussion and then we'll vote. You know, just real briefly, we, it was a long morning. We had a lot of, a lot of testimony. We had a lot of people. Uh, there were people even who were upset with what, what the county had done. But at the end, they decided that they did not want to go as far as taking their delegates away. I thought the committee did a very fine job. They listened. I thought everybody was treated fairly. And I think uh, we should just adopt the, the committee report. Thank you very much. Okay, so we will proceed to vote. Let me ask the parliamentarians, is it in order to request a voice vote? Or do we need to go through the roll? Okay. All right, so we'll try this first as a voice vote. Uh, you've heard the report of the committee. You've heard the motion to adopt the uh, report. And you've heard the objection and the response to that. So all in favor of adopting the committee's report, say aye. Aye. And those opposed? No. Doubt? <laughs> Chair is in doubt. We will conduct a roll. Do you have an inquiry? We've, we've already ordered the division, thank you. So we are going to do this by... Uh, all right, we will do the division first before roll call. So let's do the, the standing vote first. So uh, if you are a delegate or an alternate properly seated for a delegate, and of course there are no proxies at a convention, you'll stand when requested. Uh, do we have a staff standing by to count each side? Okay, so when I ask you to stand, uh, please remain standing until I ask you to sit. All those in favor of the committee report, please stand. Please sit down. All those opposed to the committee report, please stand up. The chair is not in doubt. The report passes. Thank you. By rule, we now proceed to the platform committee report. No, we don't. We, can, we go to the rules committee report. The rules committee was chaired by Ron Nate and Representative Lauren Stanley. Please welcome Ron Nate and Lauren Stanley. Section 6 of the Rules of the Convention, 
adding a line to the end of section 6 which, which reads, all delegates and alternates must be registered Republicans. On the handout, the S was left off, off of the uh, Republicans, so we'll, we'll fix that as we, uh, as we need to if it's adopted. It's done already. It's great. Rule change 2012-02 amends three different sections of the rules of the convention. And I will summarize what it does rather than read them. What it does is it says all proposed rules changes, all proposed platforms changes, and resolution changes for the convention will have a deadline of no later than 12 days before the convention for that to be submitted to the committees. And what this does is it it allows enough time after the county reorganizations for any new delegates to, uh, to uh, think about proposing a rules change or a platform change or a resolution change. And it also makes deadlines more consistent across the convention and across the state central committee meetings. It's been confusing to have a 10-day window for the convention on some things and a 12-day at the state central committee meeting. So with these rules changes, we'll have 12 days deadline for, for all of our meetings. A lot easier to remember. I'm getting a little bit old. So, Mr. Chairman, we move the adoption of these two rules changes. Mr. Chairman, second the motion. Okay, there's been a motion and a second to adopt these rule changes. The rule states that uh, Changes shall be presented to, the, presented to the floor of the convention for consideration and possible acceptance. If accepted by the convention, the changes will be...